I'm going to share with you now four cases uh, that I've had in the course of the last year that all fall into the same category of mild brain injury. Mr. E came to see me about four or five months ago. Uh, he was a skilled uh, mechanic. He worked uh, in a factory. Uh, he and his wife had adopted about 20 children on their own. They put out about $50,000. They went to Eastern Europe. Over the years, he had a farm. He was a passenger. His daughter was driving. She was struck from behind, and then the car was uh, rammed uh, by a semi-trailer. Uh, he uh, had to be uh, extracted from the vehicle. He was confused at the time. His wife came and told me the story. He was seen in the emergency room, but he was not uh, kept overnight. The presenting symptoms usually are pain. He was cleared with no broken bones. By the time he came to see me, about four or five months later, uh, he'd been receiving nerve blocks for pain, pain in the neck and pain in the lower extremities. But his personality had changed so significantly, uh, he was short-tempered and irritable. He couldn't really complete projects. He was a skilled uh, builder on the farm and uh, could repair things as a craftsman. Uh, he had seen a pain doctor, his primary care doctor. He couldn't sleep well. And he was really told to just write it out that there was nothing to do. He had an incident where he was so upset over something trivial that he left his uh, house in rural Illinois and took a train into the city uh, to spend the night with his son, but by the time he got there, he forgot why he was there. So this was very significant. This fella was a, a construction worker. He was a gifted athlete, went to football, uh, played for the University of Wisconsin on a scholarship. He worked on bridges, uh, and he was riding a motorcycle. I don't think he was helmeted. He was cut off, and he lost consciousness for 20 to 30 minutes. He was uh, taken to the emergency room in Rockford, where he was kept overnight for observation, and then he was dismissed. The routine evaluation included a CT scan, which didn't show a fractured skull or bleeding or swelling, and uh, he went about his business, but he could not return back to work. He had road rash, and the right side of his body was injured. He was seen by the neurosurgeon, who asked him to come back in several weeks. After he'd seen the neurosurgeon, the family brought him to me because he wasn't himself. He was very worried. He had trouble with short-term memory. He felt like his body was hurting, but he couldn't place what was causing it. I suspect because he was holding on to the motorcycle that he had strained his wrist and his shoulders. It turned out that he had uh, a tear of his shoulder uh, ligament. So he presented with equal presentation. He couldn't sleep. He was forgetfulness. He had trouble with attention. He was moody. And the neurosurgeon had discharged him and said, come back in three months. There's nothing to do. He really didn't know where to go. This fellow I saw last year, uh, Timmy, a uh, football player, I think he played center. Um, he'd been playing for uh, 10 years. He had a concussion about a month before he saw me, went to the emergency room, and he was cleared. He was told that he shouldn't play. But when he went back to play, he had another concussion. And then he came to me. He was dizzy. He had a headache. He wanted to go back to football, but he really wasn't himself. He had trouble concentrating in the classroom. It was more difficult to process information. I didn't know about the best testing. I didn't have a computer to do the computer test I just showed you. But it was fairly clear that he wasn't ready to go back to school to play football. So he stayed the month out. And he had some symptomatic medicines for pain relief. This lady came to see me. This lady was very bright. Uh, I think in her 20s, she got into an MD-PhD program at the University of Chicago. By the time she came to me, she had been in a study with uh, Dr. Uh, Krauss, who's spoken here before, uh, about brain injury. She was walking through a door, uh, or no, she was walking down an aisle, I think it was, and as she walked down the aisle, a shelf fell. She fell, she was confused, and she ended up going into the, uh, the, the brain injury clinic through the University of Illinois. And uh, she had some images done, and, and part of the study was to put her on medication. 
She didn't want to go on medication, and I think her sister brought her up to see me about two years later. Uh, at this point, she had another business. She would go back and forth to Africa, and she had started a medicinal business working with uh, endogenous herbs and things. And she had a terrible time keeping track of records uh, and remembering things. This was a fairly bright lady. She couldn't read. She was a voracious reader. Things were slower. She didn't have mood or pain problems at that point. And she's seen me now for about two years. So this was a mild brain injury, and she had been offered one medicine, which she refused to take. 